Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 193 of the J Situation Podcast. I'm recording this on January 2nd, 2024. Happy New Year, guys. Yeah, we made it. It's 2024. What a time to be alive. Uh, you'll have to forgive me today. My voice is going. I actually, I woke up this morning. I uh, had a little bit of a weird sore throat and I could not speak. But I have been uh, working today and drinking some hot tea and things like that. My voice came back. We're going to see how far I can get through this. Uh, so I'm um, sorry for the scratchy voice. Just bear with me. Should be good to go next time. But the show must go on. And uh, I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas holiday and a New Year's celebration. And you got to spend it with your families and your friends and your loved ones. I hope you all had a blast and got a, little, a lot of good relaxation in. So it's time to kick off 2024 after, uh, I was going to say a short break, but uh, we had a long break. It, it was much needed. So today we're going to talk about a new data drop. That's right. We're going to tackle some more rimfire testing. The resilient suppressors Jesse's Girl is back, and this time uh, it's on the Beretta 21A subcompact semi-automatic pistol. Yeah, the little Beretta Bobcat as many folks know it. Yeah, so that's cool to see. Uh, that data and analysis will be live with this podcast uh, in the morning. So, um, uh, you know, it's not live right now if you're an early bird and listen to this in, in the middle of the night or something, but just just be patient. Go back to bed. It'll, it, the data will be live w when you wake up, <laughs> okay? Um, also, uh, I think we're going to hit listener questions today. Uh, we're into the sixth solicitation, so that should be a good time as well. Okay, so that's what we'll do. Uh, assuming my voice continues to work. <laughs> We're going to see how far we get. Okay? And, and right now, I want to uh, uh, give you some words from our sponsors. And keep in mind, if you are listening on Spotify or YouTube or wherever the timestamps are available, you can always skip to the topics ahead of time because I'll give you those links in the show notes or in the in the uh, video notes or wherever you're listening, okay? Um, so just so you know, the J Situation podcast is proudly sponsored by Legion Athletics. What great folks, man. Because nothing you do, exercise, sports, anything's worth doing without consistency. You have to do it all the time if you want to be good at it. And Legion Athletics can help. They got whey protein, pre-workout, post-workout. They don't have everything you need, man, but they have a lot of it. You know, some folks have been asking me my favorite flavor of whey protein from Legion. I really like the mocha cappuccino. That's probably my favorite whey protein that I've used. They have a lot of different flavors. Chocolate's good, but the mocha cappuccino flavor is my favorite of that. The... Uh, blood orange flavor of the pulse pre workouts my favorite. Uh, the performance surge, I'll either do unflavored mixed with some other stuff, uh, or they have a blue raspberry that's really good. There's a lot of interesting flavors of all the different supplements. Um, I'm really into the magnesium uh, supplement they have as well. Uh, there's just a lot of good stuff. So check them out. Um, if you would like, you can use code word Pew Science on their website to save 20% off of your first order, you can use that code for double loyalty points going forward as well. So you end up getting a net 10% off everything you buy with that. Just use the code Pew Science all the time. And if you're like me and you buy supplements continuously because you work out continuously and it's part of your, your routine, using a code like that can pay dividends because it's essentially just going to give you free stuff later, which you're going to use anyway. So that's what I'm into. So yeah, please. Uh, and I'm not just saying this because they're a sponsor. I even if they weren't a sponsor, I would be using their stuff. Okay, uh, it, it is it is really great. Go so go get strong. LegionAthletics.com. It's important. All right. Uh, the episode is also brought to you by Top Gun Range Houston. That's right. Um, they are a pretty great range in the Houston area. If you're ever in that area, even if you're just visiting, I encourage you to go check them out. They have a 15 lane indoor shooting range and they have the largest firearm rental fleet in the entire state of Texas. Not only can you rent pistols and rifles and shotguns and machine guns, who doesn't love to do that? You can also rent silencers and that's a pretty big deal because uh, being able to rent a silencer and put it on a host weapon and shoot it before you buy it is surprisingly, or maybe unsurprisingly, rare. Uh, 
And uh, those guys really do understand sponsors uh, very well. They are a corporate Pew Science supporter in addition to sponsoring this podcast. Uh, they do have host weapon combinations that mimic the tested configurations uh, in the uh, articles at PewScience.com. Uh, you will be shooting at an indoor range, so keep that in mind. But nonetheless, you get a feel for the balance of the weapon, the general operation of the weapon, the the like the, the blowback, for example, which is a really great thing to be to be able to experience. So pr- please go check out TopGunRange.com. Um, to check out the website. Check them out in Houston, and you can bother them on Instagram all day. They told me to tell you that. No, <laughs> at, at Top Gun Range is their Instagram account. So go check them out. One second. <clears throat> Yeah, my voice might go. It's okay. Did you know that this episode is also sponsored by High End Armament Technology? They're pretty good. They're a dealer of exactly that, high end arms and accessories. That's right. They have significant longevity in the machine gun game, NFA game, night vision, lasers. I'm going to start cutting these ads short, guys, because I am losing my voice. We need to get to the podcast. Check these guys out at highendarms.com, okay? Uh, Just Google it. You'll find their socials. Um, This is also brought to you by Silencer Shop. You can use their kiosk, do your fingerprints and photos electronically. You'll cut down on errors. You'll simplify your sponsor purchasing process. You get a money-back guarantee. It's pretty good. No transfer fees, no paperwork errors. Just you and your sponsor with no drama. It truly is sponsor ownership simplified. That's right. And uh, now I would like to tell you, in 2024, we are continuing this, that this podcast is sponsored by the Pew Science Laboratory. All right. I am the technical director of the lab. In the interest of public education, the lab sponsors this podcast and runs a public research effort. It continues to push the science or industry forward one test at a time. Okay, you can visit PewScience.com for the suppression rating. It is the simplest and the most accurate hearing safe rating for suppressed small arms. It's based on true human inner ear response of the entire gunshot from before combustion takes place all the way until all the combustion is gone. Pew Science is the home of the Sonsor Sound Standard. There are seven sections. It is the most in-depth and accurate Sonsor data and analysis in the entire world. It's all available to the public 24-7. Check it out at PewScience.com, okay? And you can support this podcast. You can support Pew Science and all the public testing we do by joining with a membership at PewScience.com. That's right. Donate feature on the website. If you're not into recurring stuff, that's cool too. Um, something that's free, doesn't cost you anything, share it with your friends. Give it a good rating on Spotify or iTunes or wherever. Uh, like and subscribe on YouTube, wherever you listen, okay? That would be awesome. Just continue to spread the word. So far, so good, right? We've been doing this a couple years. It's working pretty well, I think, okay? So two topics I have prepared for you today. Topic one, sound signature review 6136. That's right. The resili- resilient suppressors Jesse's girl. On the Breda 21A subcompact semi-automatic rimfire pistol, it's an interesting silencer and it's an interesting host and an interesting test. That's right. So we're going to kick off 2024 with an introductory discussion for this white paper published concurrently with this episode. It'll be great. Okay. And um, topic two, I did want to wish you a happy new year. I am uh, glad to be back with all of you. And so I want to take a a dive into listener questions again. We're going to hit more from the sixth solicitation. All right. All of these questions are submitted by the public. Uh, This is a great opportunity to learn about things that maybe uh, you you may want to know about, but we're afraid to ask. Okay. Okay. So let's move into topic one at a time of eight minutes and 40 seconds. Very good. Man, my, my voice has... Worked for eight minutes. See how far we can push it. Topic one, sound signature review 6136. Resilient suppressor is Jesse's girl on the Beretta 21A. Subcompact semi-automatic pistol. The Jesse's girl is back. That's right. No, we have uh, certainly had some demand for rimfire testing. And resilient suppressors continues to kick off the long-awaited reignition of the rimfire data set, as it were. Yeah, if you remember, uh, we kicked off the public presentation of the silencer sound standard research pedigree with the rugged oculus testing that's right uh, that was in 2020 for those of you who were around uh, many moons ago <laughs> four years ago that's crazy um, resilient stepped up and funded a research program with their jesse's girl silencer on the cz 452 bolt action rifle uh, that that was presented in article 6125 
if you remember. Now, in Article 6, 126, or I'm sorry, 136, uh, we're covering the same silencer, uh, the Jesse's Girl, uh, but on a much different host. Okay, that's right. Uh, now, uh, it is the Beretta 21A subcompact semi-automatic pistol, the little Beretta Bobcat. That's right, the Beretta Bobcat, C- completely different animal. Uh, than a 16-inch bolt-action rifle. I tell you what, yeah, completely different. So this is a pretty interesting test. Uh, we are using CCI standard velocity ammunition now uh, for all rimfire testing here at Pew Science. Uh, we're doing that for its general high quality and consistency, and the fact that it stays subsonic for most folks out of 16-inch barrels. Uh, I say most folks because you know the speed of sound depends on temperature. And temperature does vary uh, depending on environment. And so uh, just CCI standard velocity should stay subsonic for most people out of a 16-inch 22 barrel. Uh, If it's not, well, you're different. And we tried. (laughs) Also, um, just so you know, and this is just some like silencer history for you, but CCI standard velocity is probably one of the most uh, commonly used ammunition loads for silencer users historically and for testing historically. So it stands to reason we would continue to use that load. Uh, we haven't had any um, contrary opinions to that. I just wanted to iterate this because you know we don't talk about room fire a lot, but we'll talk about it more. So now you'll you're, you'll you'll see that. You know um, it should be it should be said though. Just because CCI standard velocity is consistent for rimfire ammunition doesn't necessarily mean it's consistent for all ammunition, okay? We have found that in general, rimfire ammunition seems to be a little less consistent than centerfire ammunition. Uh, So to really get a good um, step up in that, you, you really, you have to go to some premium match ammo. And since we want to recreate results that most people would get with a very commonly used ammo, we're, we're sticking with CCI, so we're going to keep this going, okay? Just just keep this in mind as we, especially in this, these semi-auto tests, it's going to be interesting for you to see what can happen, okay? It's a little challenging for us, a little bit a little challenging for you. It'll be learning together, okay? Now, we had to, and, and this is this is a good good as time as any to bring this up. We actually had to go back and retest the old rugged Oculus on this host weapon with the CCI ammo. Uh, those of you old Pew Science enthusiasts may remember in Article 6.2, the second article published in the standard, the Oculus was tested on the Breda 21A as well, you know, just as the resilient... Uh, Jesse's girl was tested uh, recently here, but in the old Oculus test, we had literally used random ammunition, and not only was the ammunition random, it was actually unknown. Um, it, it was in a Ziploc bag that a gentleman had at an industry event, uh, and uh, Pew Science was demonstrating PewSoft to these people. Okay, I think I talked about this before, but this is just. This, it's pertinent now. Um, so so we were there. We said, hey, just grab that bag of ammo, the 21A, and that rugged Oculus, and let's show show you guys how this all this works. And we did. And we a lot of people are like, ooh, and ah, and all that good stuff. And, and since it was a great test to juxtapose with the 16-inch bolt-action testing we had done, we just let it ride yeah, all the way in the standard since 2020. I mean, it's been there since 2020, okay? So now, though, since, and, and you know, Rimfire just has not been on our list because it just, we there were bigger fish to fry, so to speak, for, the, for all these years. But s- since we're doing more Rimfire now, and uh, specifically we're doing more Beretta 21A testing, we couldn't just leave the Oculus hanging. And so we went back with member funding. Uh, we tested it in both configurations again, the long and short, because if you remember, the rugged Oculus is a modular silencer. 
And, and we did, and this time we tested it with a known ammunition, the CCI standard velocity stuff. And, and, and so after that, we added an addendum to Article 6.2. I, I actually did that over the holiday. I kind of broke my vacation that I was going to take, and I wrote that up just because it needed to be done. Um, so now you have Oculus results on the Beretta 21A with random unknown ammo, as you did before, and now you also have it in both configurations with CCI standard velocity. And so now you will be able to use the CCI standard velocity ammo tests to compare with this new resilient suppressors, Jesse's girl test. You see how all that works. So now all is right with the world. <laughs> so it's all, all copacetic. Now all apples to apples, as they say. Okay. So in the ranking section, I have changed the ammo type of that old test to random 22 ammo. So we don't, because because we really don't even know if it was subsonic or supersonic or what because you know it's it's such a short barrel whatever you shoot out of that gun's gonna be subsonic anyway so we don't know what it was and, and frankly we don't even know the difference between the long configuration test and the short configure configuration test ammo with that silencer that day so it's just really it just really needed to be retested and that's why we did okay okay so now we can move forward you know the Jesse's girl. It does pretty well. Uh, the good thing about the performance from the Jesse's Girl is that it did well on the bolt action rifle, and it's also doing really well on the on the really small pistol. And that's something you you do need to be aware of. Uh, not all rimfire uh, silencers can hang on both types of hosts. Okay, so as we publish more, you'll see some performance differences between models, and we'll start to learn more together about which which uh, uh, 22 baffle designs perform uh, more efficiently with low pressure, with high pressure, or both. And I tell you what, we have tested some hum dingers, and we've tested some old stuff just to see how it's stacked up to. We've tested a lot of rimfire. We just haven't been publishing a lot, so maybe that, that'll change in 2024. How about that? I, we, people have been screaming for it, so what better time than now? So yes, so please, again, this is just an introduct, introduction to this, so please go check out the review. It is live right now, as long as you're not too much of an early bird. We will do a deep dive next week, per typical, but I did want to let you know it's live now, and what better time to do a data drop than the first week of the year. Seemed efficient. Really, I, I'm upset that my voice is going because I... Goodness, just... I. Sorry, resilient. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk technically about your your silencer next episode. My voice will, I assure you. Well, I hope. I don't want to write a check my butt cat can't cash, but I think my voice will be good next week. Okay. So so um so go go check it out, guys. Um, big thanks to resilient suppressors as always for trusting uh, the Pew Science Laboratory to perform this work. And you know what? You're gonna see some more from resilient suppressors later on too. We're not done. We're not done with them. They, they're making some stuff. They're doing some things. So we'll check it out, okay? It'll be great, okay? Okay, that's a good intro for that. We'll move into topic two at a time of 18 minutes and 19 seconds. Okay, one second. <clears throat> oh, man. Yeah, that's a weird... You know, you wake up with a... With your 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 throat is just sore to swallow, but it's not hurting. No other symptoms, right? And you're like, huh, that's interesting. Day goes on, you're not talking, you're just working. <laughs> I took a phone call today. I was talking with my team about something, and I started talking, and voice stopped working mid call. N not the best for productivity in the first week back, frankly, <laughs> but here we are. Okay. I don't know why. <laughs> Couldn't tell you. Not a doctor. <sighs> Not a doctor. Okay. So, uh, topic two. Uh, I did want to wish you a happy new year. Um, I am very glad to be back. I took a long vacation and I needed it because January is going to be nuts. Shot show and everything. So, I wanted to dive into listener questions because... Uh, we have a lot to go through, and it is probably one of my favorite things 
to do on the podcast. I know a lot of you guys get a kick out of it as well, okay? So we're going to dive back into the sixth solicitation. As a reminder, these are all submitted by the public, okay? It's really great. I did cheat a little bit this time, and I looked at some of the ones we were going to go through just because I... It's been such a long time since I like it kind of felt weird like coming back from vacation. So I, I took a look at the spreadsheet and there's there's some good ones in here. So um I will say the questions are getting more complex. Okay. I think that probably you folks are you folks are getting more complex with your questions, you're getting more complex with your thought processes and with your desire to learn more. And I think that's really cool to see. I get a kick out of that. It's like it's almost like the effort's working weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I say this a lot too, but you guys really are a cut above. I think you guys really are um, in, in the upper echelons of um, firearm uh, consumers and enthusiasts. And that's uh, I think that's really great. And I think you should be honored that that's true. But also it, with that comes a lot of responsibility because I think a lot of people look to all of you for help. Um, a, a lot of you are very, uh, you know, l- uh, that listen to this podcast. I know you give me feedback about how you help others that are just getting into firearms or just getting into silencers or, you know, maybe it's your family members, your friends, your, your colleagues. And that's really cool. So I, I think that's really great. And so that's a lot of responsibility too. So I um, just wanted to remind you of that um, with, with a lot of knowledge comes a lot of responsibility. You have a lot of power, a lot of power. So use it wisely. Okay, let's move into our spreadsheet. So we are in the sixth solicitation of, of questions. Um, we left off last time, and remember, it's a new year, a lot of new new listeners. If you go to PewScience.com slash podcast, every episode has metadata tags. Every episode with listener questions is tagged with the listener questions metadata tag. Click that link. They're all hyperlinks. If you click that tag or search with it, search in the Google search box on PewScience.com, it will pull up every episode with listener questions, okay? So you can go wild and listen to all of them, like put it on a playlist and go crazy. So we left off on question 418, uh, local question number four. And uh, that question last time we did this was, uh, is it possible um, that bolt gun performance doesn't scale with barrel length like a gas gun performance? And that was actually a... <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> that was actually a very interesting question. One, one second, guys. That was actually a very interesting question. Um, it, it was a little confusing, um, but but I went went on to explain um, that uh, really you should have similar scaling uh, with regard to muzzle suppression rating on both platforms. Uh, but there are some complications with semi-autos. So please, if you're interested in my answer to that question, please go back um, to that episode. Um, in which it was answered, and you will you will be able to listen to the answer that I gave. We'll now tackle uh, question number four hundred and nineteen, sub question five of the sixth solicitation. The question is: Best use cases of SCI six versus WB from your anecdotal experiences: re wave propagation, flash, flow rate. Etc. Hmm. That's a. It's actually a really well thought out question. Um, let me repeat that in a way that you folks will understand. Everyone will understand. So this person is asking. Um, in my experience, since you know I've shot these silencers a bunch. Um, what's about be- like what's the best use case for, like an SEI six or like a that's a CGS silencer or a WB that's a cat uh, silencer from the company King uh, Combat Application Technologies Cat. Um, and, and like the, the parameters, this person is asking, uh, well, like with regard to like wave propagation, flash flow rate, all, all the, all the, the good stuff that we, we look at all the performance uh, attributes, like what's, what's a good use case for the, for, for these two silencers. So it's, it's an excellent question. You know, for me, um, if I, and this is just, this is for me, you asked in my experience and, and so it, for me, if I have a choice, between the SAI six or the Cat WB, uh, I, I'm most of the time I'm probably running the the WB, um, just because the flow rate is higher, the silencer smaller. If you're using the 
QD version of the WB. They're using the same mount. So, I mean, you know, the SCI 6 is also a really good silencer. Uh, I, but it, it's kind of a loaded question because I'm not limited by Form 4 transfers or things like that a lot of times, guys, with these silencers. So, and I have them both. So I would just use the WB. I don't, it's not just, just because of the nature of it. Um, now that being said, again, they're, they're both great silencers. The thing about the SCI six, it, it's basically, it, it's doing what an RC two does, but a little better. You can't break it as easy as you can break an RC two. Not that most people can break an RC two, but I'm just saying, the SCI-6 is built different. It's a different animal, okay? You, you can think of the SCI-6 as an evolution of the Helios design, in a way, from CGS, okay? When you, when you look at a WB from CAT, you're looking at something that vents differently in early time, and it, it's really structuring the annular flow in a different way as well. And probably one of the biggest differences between the two is the gas exit geometry, um, so I will say both systems are pretty good with flash. Like you were asking, both systems are pretty good with flash. I think the WB is really good, especially the Inconel model doesn't have sparking and, and it is really, really good flash. Um, I, I think the SCI six is good in that respect. I think the WB is a little bit of a step ahead, um, in, in technology. I think I would say, um, I think, you, you know, you, you probably can't go wrong with either of them for an SBR. For example, um, they're really both good SBR silencers. I think it's all about what you need. I think probably probably the WB is more advanced, and that's that's really saying something because the SCI six is a pretty advanced silencer. It's pretty good. Um, you know, you asked about my experiences. Um, I haven't shot. You know, let me think about this. I haven't shot them both back to back a lot. But I can tell you that on a gun that I have that was tuned for the SCI-6, I couldn't get the gun to run correctly with the WB because the WB didn't have enough back pressure. Okay? The WB, again, it has an early time flow rate that's higher. So I needed more gas on that gun. So that's what you, you asked, right? You asked um, flow rate. You asked about flash. So that's, I mean, that's direct comparison for you. Um, wave propagation. That's a good question. So if I remember correctly, this I'm just going off of memory. I want to say the muzzle suppression rating from the WB is higher. Is that, oh, you're going to make me go to my website, aren't you? One second. One second, ladies and gentlemen. I am going to the interwebs here. I'm just going to go to, uh, I'm just going to go to the public ranking, ranking section. It's the easiest thing for me to do. I'm going to go to weapon system. I'm going to mark 18. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I'm going to sort by muzzle suppression rating. Descending. Huh. Okay. Well, the WB on the mark 18 is 34.1. SCI 6 34. Okay. That's the same. Ear. 27.9 at the ear for the WB. 24.5 for the SCI 6. Okay. Okay. So with wave propagation, interesting. Um, probably, and this is, this is going to be a little bit complicated because ejection port blast is real and it doesn't care where you are sometimes to make itself known. Um, I guess since you're asking about wave propagation, I think I guess you're, you're probably talking about like indoor versus outdoor. I would say that all other things equal and you had a WB and an SEI six indoors, um, it's likely that the WB is going to do better. And the reason I say that is because if you're in a hallway, the ejection port blast from the SCI-6 is going to be a little more intense. It's going to be more like a Surefire RC-2 is. And because the muzzle suppression ratings are so close, it is likely that the WB is going to be a little better indoors. Now, do I know that for sure? I don't know that for sure. But I'm saying, looking at this data in a very simple way, I'm going to assume... Oh, you know what? Hold on a second. I'm going to look at something in the waveforms in one of the articles really quick so I can tell you something. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with WB. WB has a little bit higher omega too. WB has like lower back pressure, but a little bit higher omega. This is a case where alpha is driving stuff a lot too. So when you, when you get a silencer that's having a higher flow rate, letting the gun function with less energy, but it has a higher omega, you are getting in a pretty advanced state. And that's why, guys, this that surge bypass stuff, man. You when you have that higher omega, but you're still able to let the gun not cycle as fast. You're you're really doing work. That's why that ODB is so good too. I man, I tell you what. That's why, like, so with wave propagation, I give the edge to the cat stuff right now. I there are some tests we we would need to do um, in in certain environments to confirm that answer, but. I would get, I would probably give the edge to the WB, and and since you asked, okay, and so that's like data that that's pure data driven and what what we see in the free field testing, okay, that's just a prediction, okay, so yeah, so anyway, the data is um, uh, showing that early time flow rate is higher too in the waveforms of PewScience.com, so you can go read the articles, especially if you remember, that really help you understand that, okay, because you can look at the the ear stuff, all right, I think that'll be great. Good question. It's a complicated question, but good question. Sometimes it's hard to know. Um, and then you know your 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 uh, your question was well, best use cases. I think they're both probably great. Um, I think they're both meant for like five five six SBRs. I think you probably use them on longer barrels too. The thing you got to remember is like the the heavier it is, heavier the silencer is, the longer the barrel, the more like you know it's a pain in the butt. So you have like a twenty inch barrel, five five six. I mean. These sensors are like in canal. I mean, you can get a. I think you can get a titanium. You can get a titanium WB for sure. I think the SCI six is coming out in titanium too. So if you're into that, so. But hey, you have to ask CGS about that SCI six. I think. I think. I think. I think. Okay. Thank you for the question. Good question. Let's go again. Question four hundred and twenty. <laughs> nice. Local question number six. Do you know what the next test host is going to be? 300 blackout, semi? 308, semi? You mean semi-automatic, sir? Um, Or ma'am, yeah. Do I know what the test... Yeah, I mean, we have all kinds of things in the works. Uh, there's Magnum Rifle. There's 300 blackout, semi-automatic, 308, semi-automatic, 4570, 45 ACP pistol, mini guns, rail guns. No, just kidding about some of those. Um... When the new test hosts come, you'll know. Uh, we need to publish some more 14 and a half inch mid. You know, you've only seen a couple on that. We also need to get some more rimfire stuff out, like the stuff you, you're seeing today, uh, like the Jesse's Girl and the Berta 21A. That's important. Um, man, we also need to do some more 9 millimeter stuff. There's a lot of holes to fill. So I I, I will say there need, there's a huge gap of nine millimeter silencers on the website and we just need to get more out too. That's there's actually nine millimeter pistol silencers are super important for the public. So that's probably something to focus on as well. Okay. All this stuff is important, but, uh, so the answer to your question is kind of good question. Um, global question, 421 local question seven. Will we ever get nomad L 300 blackout data? Oh man, that's a good question. Um, so, we need to publish that fair. If I remember correctly, um, well, I know for a fact that was a member-funded test. But what I think happened, I need to look back at this. I forgot. What I think happened is we, I think we had some data uh, QAQC issues with the test that we did. And we didn't catch it till later, and it was a whole thing. Um, and I, I think that's why we haven't published that. Um, I, th I think that's why we were holding off on that. I need to re go revisit it. Thank you for the reminder. I appreciate it. Um, now I do remember, um, the, the general results. And I think I can speak to this. Um, if I remember correctly, it's doing pretty well on subsonic 300 blackout, the nomad L, but it's not doing like Hyperion level or like full Nelson. Well, so just so you know, like if, if, if that's what you wanted to know, I can tell you right now, the Hyperion and the full Nelson are quieter than the Nomad L with 300 blackout. I'm, I'm fairly, I, I'm almost 100% sure about that. 
Okay. So just like that's what our testing has shown. So I, if I mean no, I mean the Nomad L is no slouch of three hundred blackout by any means, but no, the Hyperion and the Full Nelson uh, do eclipse the subsonic three hundred blackout performance of the Nomad L on the on the um, on the three hundred blackout bolt gun test host. That, that that I'm pretty cer certain about that. Okay, and I think you would expect that if you understood the silencers. So yeah, especially the the size of the three. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you for the question. Um, question 422, um, local question 8. I'd love to see some 5.7 by 28 testing specifically on the PS90 platform. It's a fascinating caliber. Oh. I agree, sir or ma'am. Thank you for the question. You know, it, uh, that is an interesting thought. Um, it's funny. I was actually speaking with someone about the HK MP7. And I was speaking with him about the 4.6 round that it shoots. Because you see, if we test the 4.6, that means we have to test the 5.7. If we test the 5.7, it probably means we have to test the 4.6. And the, the issue with doing 5.7 is that it's really it's a really niche caliber <laughs> You're like, like 4.6 isn't? <laughs> no. Yeah, but no, if, of course, 5.7 is more popular because you can actually buy the guns that, that shoot it. Um, but, you know, but even then, there really aren't a lot of weapons out there. And, and I really think our, t our time is better spent with more ubiquitous cartridges than 5.7. Okay. I'm, 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 I, I do think that if there's ever a civilian MP7, which I don't think will, will ever happen. Um, I mean, I wish it would, but I doubt it. Um, that would probably push us to test 4.6 which would mean that we would have to do 5.7 for a gauntlet cage match. And that's how uncommon I think 5.7 is. That I think it's so uncommon, I feel like it would take another cartridge forcing a competition to bring it out. Like that's that's how like I just don't think 5.7 is common enough to matter right now. And I know it matters to you, dude, and it matters to me, but, dude, there's a lot of people, man, and I don't know. You know, speaking of cage match with 5.7 and 4.6, from the top ropes, who do you think would win? <laughs> I don't know. I like Belgian waffles, and both countries make great beer. So it's a puzzle, isn't it? The Germans and the Belgians. What do we do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm joking with you, kind of, but uh, I don't know, man. I think the I think the P90 would be an awesome, awesome test host, and we would test um, some five five six cans and twenty two cans, and I and we would show you how much better a five five six can is going to be than a twenty two can with five seven. Because if you think you're going to have a good time shooting. 5.7 through a 22 can compared with a 5.56 can on a machine gun. You got another thing coming. The, the, those little 22 cans are not, they're just not going to hang with the 5.56 cans in shooter, in shooter comfort. I think that's, that's, that's what I think. Having not have any, any, any test data with it, but <laughs> you're going to need something super high flow rate to like have a good time with 5.7. If you're, if your sponsor is really small, that's what I think. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Uh, question 423. Local question nine. Oh, this is interesting. Is it a coincidence that the SCI-6 and WB at ear impulse curves look similar? Um, that's a good, good I guess, thank you for the question. I don't know that I agree with you in well they okay so uh, okay okay so what this ladies and lady or gentleman is asking is the the okay so the signatures measure the shooter's ear in each test right we we're going to show you um pressure in the free field and we're going to show you um mom momentum transfer potential we're going to show you impulse as well Okay, and this 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 person is is asking, well, 
the the momentum transfer potential histories at the shooter's ear with the SEI 6 and the WB, I'm assuming on the Mark 18, uh, look similar. Is that coincidence? And I'm going to tell you right now, they're a bit different. Those, those are definitely different, actually. And so you also have to keep in mind you're comparing two silencers tested on the Mark 18. And the ejection port of the Mark 18 is a significant blast pressure source, regardless of silencer. Okay. There are some key differences um, between these two these two silencers. And to be clear, this is member data and this is a public podcast. But I will say, one thing you need to look at is time in the positive phase. Okay. You may be you may be missing part of this, sir or ma'am. Um, there, there is something in the public data you can examine as well. I think I just, did I not just, I just, I think I just talked about this in a previous question, but recall, recall that the WB is letting the Mark 18 bolt speed be a little slower, right? Right. Okay. Why is that? It's higher flow rate. Yeah. What is a likely consequence of that higher flow rate? Uh, the bolt took a little longer to open, right? The chamber was closed a little longer, right? That lets the pressure drop in the barrel and the chamber a little more, right? Which then lets the differential to atmosphere be a little less. And the severity to the shooter's ear is a little lower, right? Okay. Shooter's ear suppression rating on those two tests. What was it? 24 and a half versus like 28, 27.9. So not crazy different, but that's a few points. On the Mark 18, that's indicating something's going on. When you look at the mechanical signatures and the blowdown, if you shoot both of these things on the same gun, which I have, you'll see the flow rates are different. The signatures do reflect that. So to your question, is similarity a coincidence? Well, I mean, there are a lot of similarities in momentum transfer be between a lot of different silencers in the Mark 18 but the difference can sometimes be nuanced. Just because this you, you're seeing a gross similarity doesn't mean that the, the similarity that the, 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 those similarities that you're noticing are the ones that matter for what's going on. You, you got to look deeper. And I, and I think if you look at them closely, you're gonna, you don't forget about time, guys. Don't forget about positive phase and negative phase and time. People ask me, well, how does the suppression rating calculate it? Well, amplitude. Duration, frequency, phase. It's a lot of different um, parameters. Uh, the, the wave functions are very complex. Okay, this is a dynamic event, and there's continuous continuous dyna dynamic response happening. This is not um, it's not static. So it, if you neglect the, t the, the, the the these wave parameters, you're you're going to be up uh, up creek, as they say. Okay, so 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 in summary, I will say to answer your question. Um, is it a coincidence they look similar? I mean, it's not a coincidence. It's just they do grossly because they're both shot on a Mark 18 and and and, it's, and there's ejection port blast involved and the barrel's the same length and the silencers are close to the same length. So, it, so you know, they're both not blowing your, your ears out from ejection port blast, but one's doing something a little bit more advanced. And we've I think we've kind of beat that horse this, this episode. <laughs> All right? I hope that helps, sir. Or ma'am. Okay, let's... Uh, what does my voice have in it? Oh, I want to do more. I don't know. I feel like I can talk. I know my voice sounds weird right now. At least it sounds weird to me in my headphones that I'm using. But uh, I'm going to keep going until I can't. Uh, global question 424. Local question 10. Will you please wildly speculate on what the theoretical performance of shotgun silencers is? <laughs> One second. Will you please tell us a story um, on the theoretical performance? Huh. You know, that's interesting, man. Interesting thought experiment. You know, I bet theoretically you hit a hard limit based on bore diameter, man. I think that on really long barrels, you stand a good chance to to use a shotgun silencer without hearing protection for bird hunting, I would say. I would bet. And remember, this question is, will I wildly speculate? This is wild speculation. Do not take this to the bank. This is just me having fun with you. We're having fun. This is great. Like I said, super long barrel with a 
decent shotgun silencer. I bet you take your ears off and shoot a dove. <laughs> but man, those it's a your shotgun silencer is going to need to be really light because handling a long barrel with a big heavy silencer on the end of it it's cumbersome, not fun at all. Totally ruins the experience of shooting a dove. For example, which is to this day the only thing I do with a shotgun. I mean, who? What are you guys else can do with shotgun, dude? Like, really? It's like just use a rifle for like killing most things, and like shotguns are like all just clunky. I like to shoot dove with shotguns. Um, now, does that make me a fud? Quite possibly. So be it. But I tell you what, dove hunting is fun. They taste good. It's a damn good time. With regard to technical performance, uh, you have some issues to work through here. Um, a lot of the, the the weight savings folks seem to do with shotgun silencers uh, seem to result in durability issues. Uh, we've seen some things come apart, um, which is a problem. That's a problem, dude. Now, I hesitate to speculate on performance limits because we haven't tested these things. That will come. Believe me, it will come. I just don't think... I, I don't think balancing size and weight is easy for these systems, guys. It might not it it might not end up being one of those things where you're gonna use a smaller one and you wear ears and it's just safer in general and maybe safer for your hunting dog, but it's still pretty severe. It's like it's like when you go it's like when you know you have some like size limitation for you know like an entry carbine weapon. You know, you have this like shoulder fire weapon that let's say it's five, five, six. And it's like, oh man, it's like, you know, it's got to be a Mark 18 or it's got to be like, you know, like an something even shorter barrel five, five, six. And you're not even allowed to put a silencer on this longer than like four inches long or like three inches long. And you're like, oh my God. So you have to put some kind of crazy small silencer on it. And you do. And like the, the team's going in and they have this stuff and they're using it. And obviously it's not, not the quietest thing, but it's, it's like your performance limitation. So, you know, it's going to be loud, but you know, it's going to be way quieter than unsuppressed, which like almost all silencers are right. Way quieter than unsuppressed, like orders of magnitude quieter than unsuppressed. When you look at like the peer pressure amplitudes. So you're like, okay, so you know what you're getting into? That's when I think of shotgun silencers, that's what I'm thinking of. Okay. I'm thinking of, yes, it's going to be loud. I'm gonna wear ears. Hopefully, it's small, so it doesn't. I don't doesn't make my shotgun like not be able to handle, so I can't swing it and shoot doves. Look, if you're shooting doves, it, if your shotgun is too front heavy, you're. It's not even fun anymore. What are you doing? Okay, like that's not fun. So I I, I don't think we're even there yet, dude. But we'll see. It'd be good to test them. You know what I'm saying? That's my wild speculation. That concludes my answer. Okay, thank you for the question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> one second. Man, my voice feels weird. My voice sounds weird. I can't tell if it's getting better or worse. Question 425, local question 11. Will you share the suppression rating of your 308, 556, and MP5 action noise? No gunshots. Huh. Good question, sir, ma'am. It's more of a request. I mean, want me to share out with you no um it's okay uh we could compute the suppression rating of isolated parts of signatures like all day every day dude um for example like we can we can isolate any part of the signatures you see published anywhere by anyone and if the data has good enough fidelity we can do calculations to compute a suppression rating for the time window of interest that's just that's just math bro that's just math um the problem with doing that is that you get an answer, but the answer is not real and it can be very misleading and you got to be careful what you're doing. Um, let's, here's another way to think about this. So let's say you shoot your MP5, you get a signature, right? You get a, you've seen those measured on the website. If you let the bolt carrier snap, snap or fly forward with no round in the mag, you'll get a signature, right? Like if you like, the MP5 doesn't have a last round bolt hold open, but if you were to like take your left thumb and like while having it shouldered, like with the AT stock, take your left thumb and like push the charging handle out of the groove and uh, and let it slam home and still keep your keep the weapon shouldered, um, you would get 
a signature from that at your ear, right? Okay. Now, if you were able to somehow restrain the bolt from moving and you fired the MP5 like a bolt action rifle with no reciprocation, like if you're somehow able to just like put your hand inside the receiver and stop it from moving, like, like you know, put your thumb on the back of a Ruger Mark III when you're shooting 22 to keep the action closed. Like, you can't do that with MP5. But if you could, you'd get a signature too, right? You would get a signature, like a bolt gun MP5. You with me? Following me? Okay. Now, if you just add your MP5 pretend bolt action signature to an empty action noise signature by superimposing the waveforms, you will get a, a signature. And you could analyze that signature too, but it's not real. Okay. It's not real until it's all together. With perfect superposition, you could create a signature. But if you analyze only one part of it, the energy terms don't work out don't work out right. Um the signature loads a dynamic response. You can't add the response of the two separate events separately and get the same final answer. Um so if you so if we gave you a suppression rating of a bolt closing on an empty chamber, it would be correct for that. But you couldn't then compare it to the bolt closing right after you shot or something cuz your your ear is hearing more things in a longer time window. This is this is this is a continuous response spectra. It's not uh it's not perfect additive superposition. The, I know I know that you think that you can do that, but you can't <laughs> with this type of physics. Um now, that I know that's not what you're asking. I'm just saying that because that's the next that's the next thought progression once people get what you're asking. So I I, I know I didn't answer your question directly yet, but I, I just I, I answered the more complicated part first because that's where people's heads go. Now, your question will you share the suppression rating of these just random sounds? Yeah, we could provide you with those peg points, but the reason we haven't done that is so because you could misconstrue those, which could be misleading and muddy the waters. If you take them on their own, like if we just let the bolt close and publish that number and you knew that number was only valid for that case, then yeah, that would be safe and it would give you a good peg point. But like, what are you going to do with this information? Do you just want it? Do you want it just because you want to know, well, I want to know how loud that is because I know I can't ever get quiet, can't ever get quieter than that sound. That might be a good reason to know that, I guess. Is that is that true? Because you couldn't get quieter than that. It's probably true. Yeah, it's probably true, right? Kind of. Probably. So yeah, good question. I mean, the answer is like you're asking me. Will you share it? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> question four hundred and twenty-six. Sub question twelve. Some cans are getting close to performance thresholds. Do you think adding function noise to the Sonsor Sound Standard would help? <laughs> you, just, you can't. I don't know if you guys are in cahoots. You two are you two cooperating, conspiring here? This question is very related to the previous. Um, good question. So this. So let me let me repeat this for folks. It's funny. That's weird. So this later general is asking since some cans are getting pretty close to like, um like the thresholds of what's possible in certain platforms, meaning that basically when you get a Mark 18, like what's the quietest you can get the shooter's ear number? Like probably around 30, right? Like, yeah, I know the Huxworks Flow 556K got the 31 just because, you know, it has the super high flow rate. The timing was just right. It's in the free field. Like, yeah. But like, you know, you're getting 27, 28, 29, 30. Like, okay, a three to four point gap in performance spread at the ear on a semi-auto with all those silencers, I, you're probably not. I mean, it's really close, guys. A Mark 18 to the shooter's ears is just, just not quiet. Okay, you're hitting the cusp, the cups of the, the cusp of the 30 zone, and hitting the cusp of a 30 zone should not give you a warm fuzzy. What you really need to be worrying about in the Mark 18 is how much it's gassing you, and if it's like super loud. Once you can get around. 25 to 30 at the shooters that you're on the Mark 18. Okay, you're doing some work. Make sure it's not gassing you. Once you're getting below 20 on the Mark 18, something's wrong, right? 
Isn't that a good peg point? So, so this person saying some cans are getting close to performance thresholds, and that's just marketing is just one example. Some cans are getting close to performance thresholds. Do you think adding function noise to the silencer sound standard would help? I was like, yes, I, I, I do think that would help, but not, not there because blast loads are, 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 are doing you in. And, and, and the blast loads are a big deal. Your question's related to the previous question. I understand that. Now, I will say this. You can peg the scale. Uh, you can peg the suppression range scale. Once you get quiet or loud enough, it doesn't matter anymore. Scale was designed to be useful for the majority of suppressed small arms. When things get really loud or really quiet, they peg the scale. It doesn't matter anymore for the majority of people. It's just going to be super loud or super quiet. It doesn't matter. Um, in, in practicality, um so yeah so I'm, I'm i'm basically answering every possible permutation of your question um i think it would function noise could help in general just to give you context but it's not going to help for the reason that you're asking for the mark 18 maybe for some other things maybe for 22 that's a good question we'll have to look at that okay okay all right how are we doing on time that's really important 55 minutes oh, okay so we're about an hour in Minus the intro. My voice is about to explode. Let's do one more. All right, one second. Okay. <clears throat> All right. One more question, guys. Let's do this. Question 427, sub question 13. Lucky 13, baby. What physics are happening between the bullet exiting the barrel and exiting the silencer? <laughs> and I, I remember reading this question and I was like, oh no. It's such a, you know, uh, <laughs> and I picked, and I picked this one. I I picked to end on this one. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> All right, let me repeat the question. What physics are happening between the bullet exiting the barrel and exiting the silencer? So, so let me repeat this in a different way. This person is asking, what what's going on when the bullet come enters the silencer? Between the the time the bullet enters the silencer and leaves the silencer. Like, what's going on in there? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's a really good question. Sometimes people don't think about that. Um, we, we can talk through it, though. So, okay. So, let's, let's start a little earlier, though. Let's start a little earlier. So, before the bullet exits the barrel. What do you? What happens? What do you get into the silencer? We get a little precursor flow, right? And And that precursor flow enters the silencer, it starts to reflect, and then also pressurize the, 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 the first part of the silencer. You have a, because remember, you have a shock phase and a quasi-static gas phase that begins. You've got two, mm, excuse me, and this is, this is actually, I, we just talked about superposition principle with regard to um, response um, exterior with different events. Um, I'm here to tell you that inside, in this way, the two loads are actually, the, the, these, these loads can be superimposed because we're you're not um, we're not talking about the response of the silencer. We're just talking about uh, because it's not a responding system like that um, in that way. Um, in <laughs> it's getting really complicated, but but anyway, you can you can superimpose the shock load and the gas phase load. So that's what's happening. You're pressurizing it quasi statically. I'm saying quasi statically because it's not a static load, but um, but with regard to the natural period of the response of the system, it may as well be static. And then you have a dynamic load, which is completely different, and they're superimposed. And that's happening before the bullet even gets into the silencer. Then when the bullet reaches the end of the barrel and it uncorks and comes to the silencer, you get a significant blast load entering the silencer, and that gas jet is moving supersonically it's under expanded and we've talked about this before i think um now depending on the speed of that projectile the gases might be interacting with the bullet in different ways and they are certainly reflecting off of different geometry within the silencer during the time the bullet is traveling in the silencer essentially there's complex wave reflections and pressurization in different zones but it depends on the silencer design dude um it depends on the the, the, the gas jetting, the reflections, are, they're moving in different directions. In a typical baffle design, you're getting high-pressure stagnation beginning pretty early on. Um, 
in the in a higher flow rate design you you, you may have blast over reflections in many parts of the sensor before the bullet even exits that can happen you know um it just depends managing the blast loads is the key ensuring you don't get shock reflections back down the board at certain times is pretty tricky okay so you know your your question sir or ma'am what physics are happening between the bullet exiting the barrel and exiting the silencer man you just there's uh, there's a lot you have rapid heating rapid loading rapid cooling r- rapid expansion reflections wave coalescence heat transfer diffusion just there's so many different mechanisms happening in that short amount of time it's really it's really a symf- it's a symphony of physics happening happening in the silencer b- b- between the time the bullet enters and exits there's so much going on let me tell you a quick story we have a little bit more time here a long time ago there was a silencer it was a 22 silencer it was um it was an aac prodigy it was a monocore design and the first iteration of that silencer when you shot a 22 round through it what i think happened was the supersonic gases um loaded the bullet before it exited in in an asymmetrical way and caused the bullet to destabilize and it ended up keyholing in the in the target paper you know it ruined accuracy that that silencer it was because it had some asymmetric configurations and there was some kind of um internal gas dynamics that upset the trajectory of the bullet prior to exit and that was bad and they had to issue a revised design for that silencer that was a long time ago that was 10 15 years ago 15 12 12, 15 years ago give or take um so that's a real life example of a very well-known company well-known product in th- that that has a, a practical application to the to the answer to the question you just asked so i think your question's a good one i think it's good you asked it. i think we it's good we answered it on the podcast because goodness it'll probably help someone down the line make sure to test your sponsors for accuracy before you sell them <laughs> You know, you, you, you might test them for sound, for example. Oh, man, it sounds so good. It sounds so good. Did you shoot groups with it <laughs> on a bunch of different guns? Do that, too. <laughs> Sometimes you don't catch that. You know what I mean? I don't know. Could happen to anybody. You know what I mean? Anyway, that's a good question, though. Good good one to end on. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that row with yellow here in my spreadsheet. That's great, man. We hit, That's our 427th question we've ever answered on this podcast. Uh, we're cooking along. That was question number 13 of the six solicitations, so we're doing pretty good. Okay, I'm going to close my, so save the spreadsheet and close it. Very good. Okay. So I do hope this podcast was enjoyable for you folks today. I hope a lot of you, or at least 13 of you so far, the six solicitation have gotten your questions answered. Please stay tuned for more. We have a lot to go. If you haven't heard your question answered yet, I assure you, I assure you we will get to it. We answer every question that's asked. Okay. Okay. So go check out the resilient suppressors data. More of that rimfire stuff will come. It's going to be great. Um, Thanks again to resilient for trusting us to perform the work. Um, We will be back next week to talk technically about that data. Okay, it'll be good. So until next time, friends, please stay safe. And I will talk with you folks again soon. All right, bye.